Hi, um, my name is Lori Leader. I'm a clinical professor at Chicago Kent College of Law, and I'm here to talk about the Supreme Court decision that came down on June 24, 2013, in the case of University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center versus NASR. Um, it's, it's a 5 4 decision. Justice Kennedy wrote the uh, majority opinion, Justice Ginsburg wrote the dissenting opinion. Um, in that case, um, the court was asked to decide what standard applies in terms of causation in retaliation cases arising under Title VII. Um, there was a conflict among the, the circuit courts as to what standard applied. There was a stricter standard called the but for standard, which essentially um, requires a direct link between the complaint that the employee made about discrimination and any kind of adverse action that was taken against him or her uh, as a result of uh, that complaint, that would be the retaliation. In a lesser standard case called a mo motivating standard, factor standard, um, the courts are considering whether the, the retaliation is one of several factors that motivated the employer and that it would have made a difference, but it doesn't have to be the sole factor in the decision-making process. So let me offer a hypothetical to kind of illustrate the difference between these two standards. Um, suppose that an employee is selected for a layoff and the layoff is because of um, economic downturn, but the person selected for layoff is selected because he or she also made a complaint recently about discrimination in the workplace. Um, under the but for standard, because the economics motivated uh, the decision making here uh, primarily, um, the, the employee would lose if the employee was arguing that the complaint was the basis for a retaliation claim. On the other hand, under the motivating factor test, if the employee could show that Yes, the economics played a role, but so did the prior complaint. That, com that employee could prevail under the motivating factor test. Um, the court in this case opted for the but for the harder standard, and it makes it much more difficult for plaintiffs in retaliation cases to prove causation, to link what happened to them to their action of complaining, uh, and, and that makes it much more difficult. In Vance versus Ball State University, it's a five to four decision of the Supreme Court that came down on June 24, 2013. Um, the facts of Vance in a nutshell are these. Um, Vance was a server in a banquet facility and her, um, who she believed to be her immediate supervisor, that is someone who affected her assignments on a regular basis but did not have the, how, pi, how, the power to hire, fire, um, and promote her um, harassed her in her view. And she brought a lawsuit challenging the harassment um, based on race and also retaliation. Uh, and the court was then asked to decide whether this person, her, who she believed to be her supervisor, was in fact her supervisor. Because the level of liability from an employer standpoint differs if someone is a supervisor or not. And in this case, the court said that a higher standard applies to supervisor. That is, someone has to have the ability to hire, fire, or affect the terms and conditions of employment for that um, person to qualify as a supervisor under Title VII, which is the statute under which uh, this case was brought. And um, the effect of that was that Vance could not prevail on her case. She lost her case. And employers in general now will have the ability to insulate themselves from workplace harassment by um, keeping the people immediately above the line workforce uh, as people with limited supervisory authority, that is not having the power to hire and fire, and keeping that at the top so that those managers will be insulated from stricter liability under the statute. 